So, what were the hooplas of last week? This is one of those headlines that I just cannot believe people actually say and write with a straight face. U.S. Department of Homeland Security invests in Roblox counterterrorism. <laughs> what the hell is Roblox counterterrorism? Homeland Security awarded nearly seven hundred thousand dollars to address threats of extremism on social gaming platforms, with Roblox being the center of attention. Apparently, kids can be radicalized from playing too much Roblox. Hey you! This is dangerous! It's irresponsible! What happens if kids start trying this? And apparently it's believable too, because back in 2019, they did find loads of Roblox accounts that feature extremist and racist content. It's a haven for jihadists, Nazis, and KKK roleplays. You, you do know what a roleplay means, right? Call child services. Have this little psychopath committed. Whatever, I guess I can see why people would be upset by them. But I think this is one of those times where parents should be taught how to play Roblox so that their kids don't get involved in this kind of garbage. Also, they need to be taught in what role-playing actually means. And I'm not talking about the kids. I'm pretty sure the kids know a thing or two about, you know, role-playing. Also, $700,000 is quite a lot of money. I guess that's where all your tax dollars are going, making sure that kids don't get radicalized when playing Roblox. All of this could have been prevented when parents just know a thing or two about what they're playing and keep an eye on them. Sometimes it's the taxpayers that are at fault. I already discussed about Cyberpunk 2077, and I still maintain the opinion that the game is absolutely great, putting aside all of the horrendous bugs and glitches aside, a lot of those that I have experienced myself. The game has been absolutely patched ever since launch, and while there are still bugs and glitches present, at least it's not as horrendous as it was back then. And it's absolutely nuts how one anime can revive people's interest in the game. The game was absolutely trashed at launch from everybody, and now it's perfectly fine for you to become a Cyberpunk fan because Cyberpunk Edgerunners, the spin-off anime, is actually really good. The anime faithfully captures the feel of the game while still having that studio trigger flair that a lot of people love. But one thing that manages to stick to a lot of people is the characters, as all of the characters are not just likable, they are lovable. David is an excellent protagonist. He's actually proactive and make decisions on his own, even if it leads to his downfall. Lucy is a brilliant love interest. She's supportive, loyal, and has a heart. Rebecca, I don't even need to explain because everyone already did. She's pretty much this anime season waifu of choice. She has the right level of fun and crazy that a lot of people find attractive. People love all these characters and they are absolutely rooting for them to get what they want to achieve, which makes the ending for the show infinitely more tragic. I genuinely believe that people play Cyberpunk 2077 again, or even for the first time ever, just so that they can kill Adam Smasher for what he did in the show, which has left a lot of people in a murderous rage. But hey, that just marks a really good show. If it can get people so emotionally invested that the game gets loads and loads more sales, that just means that this is a good spin-off, a really good spin-off. I don't know if Cyberpunk will reach that level of Sonic where their adaptations manage to excel so much better than the actual game, or at least the recent ones, but the numbers, don't lie. Cyberpunk is amazing and all, but clearly what Cyberpunk needs is more non-white, non-cis writers. No, seriously, that's what this person is trying to suggest. I don't understand the needs of someone to be insert minority here in order to have a good and authentic writing, especially not when Cyberpunk already shows non-white and non-cis perspectives a lot. David Martinez is Hispanic, and Jackie, your prologue companion in the game, is also Hispanic. One of the major factions in the game is the Arasaka Corporation, a Japanese corporation. Claire, the bartender of Afterlife and one of the major side characters in the game, is trans. In fact, being trans is a very common thing in the Cyberpunk universe, which is to be expected. So I think Cyberpunk has fulfilled that role already, but apparently it needs more. Deleted that tweet actually because Jesus Christ y'all, I know Cyberpunk kinda just makes me sad now and I'm tired of explaining just how well I know the history and how I'd like the genre to move forward. This is why I don't like talking about my interests. Well, sad to say this, but 
Your tweet sucks. Your tweet implies that Cyberpunk hasn't dabbled on those perspectives, and it implies that Cyberpunk can somehow move forward by including perspectives that they have already included? And even if they haven't included those perspectives, can you elaborate in some examples and in how including those perspectives can make Cyberpunk to move forward? Nail on the coffin was getting attacked by other black people. That actually hurts a lot. I didn't really care until then. Gee, it's almost as if minorities have different experiences and opinions or something. This is why it's useless to have people on board the game development by simply being a minority. It's because their perspectives aren't always representative of everyone. These people who are begging for their perspective to be seen are ironically not open-minded to other people's perspectives. They're on the mindset that their perspective is the most important and the one that you need to fulfill the most. It's pretty much narcissism. That's what a lot of these arguments of representation or having other perspectives boil down to. Your perspective doesn't matter, but ours matter because of our skin color and race and social status rather than, you know, actual perspective. At least two award-nominated books this year are about very poor protagonists, but are written by authors who are never poor. I don't see why that's an issue. You don't actually have to experience something to write about something. There are loads of writers who have written about characters using guns, but have never shot a gun before in their life. That's something that happens all the time in all sorts of subjects. This is not a real gun, by the way. This is just some airsoft gun. What matters is how believable they depict the subject matter at hand. Some handle it well, some don't. It will show up in their works. Appropriating poverty for accolades is disgusting, and I don't know why we don't talk about this more because it's not really that big of a deal. I've been through a degree of poverty before. I know people who are poor and I don't mind rich people writing about being poor as long as they know what they're talking about. And even then, it's fiction. It doesn't really matter anyways. There are loads of stuff in fiction that aren't that accurate to the real world. What matters is how entertaining they are and I don't think these writers receive these awards for their authenticity or accuracy. It's mostly to how their fiction is entertaining. This tweet got some hilarious responses. I've never had an alien from outer space stretch my anus wide enough to intake a watermelon and implant all sorts of their own research equipment deep into my ass. Does that mean I can't write in any of my fiction since it never happened to me in real life? <laughs> oh! Wow, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. Absolutely taken down. No, seriously, that's a good point. But there are also some contentions to that point. This feels like a deliberate dodging of the point. Uh, no. It does address the core premise, which is why you said this feels like a deliberate dodging of the point rather than actually deliberately dodging the point. And the point is, you can only write fictional content of things that you personally experience, and one of those things is poverty. And also, alien probing. I mean, yes, alien probing won't happen in real life so far, at least. And poverty is not only a serious topic, but happens to loads and loads of people in real life, and they're still suffering from it now. So? So what? It's fiction at the end of the day. People are going to write all sorts of bad things in fiction. These are the bad things that can happen, has happened, are still happening, and will continue to happen in this grim reality that we're living in. Your best argument so far is that it's disgusting. In other words, it's your subjective philosophical point of freaking view. In other words, your feelings are hurt. You don't have to live the experience to write about it, but you do have to do what used to be called due diligence and not use, as a person of privilege, writing marginalized characters as a stepping stone to your success. Well, if that's the case, then every writer should not write about insert bad thing that has also happened to people in real life here. You're stifling creativity to protect the feelings of people who don't even have a phone. If you really care about poor people, you'd be donating your money to charity rather than complaining about writers getting nominated left and right because they write about poor people. And as someone who has experienced poverty to some degree and knows people who have experienced poverty, I can tell you that people in poverty are just people. They are asshole poor people in the same way that they are nice rich people. Sometimes poor people deserve all the sympathy in the world. Sometimes they do deserve to get stepped on.
Speaking of poverty, while some people are capable of spending money for their basic needs, they can spend more money for recreational purposes, which is also important because we need our mental health to be healthy as well. Some people waste their time for recreations on video games, some waste them on movies and TV shows. Some don't want to pay them because big companies can go screw themselves. I've already said many times that big companies are screwing you over so that you can get the entertainment that you like. Actually, no, the entertainment that you need. And that's precisely why I have always recommended people to just straight up pirate for stuff that you don't want to pay money for, unless you like to get screwed over. In which case, it's your ass. And thanks to the audacity of these people pirating stuff online so that they don't get screwed over by corporations, you also got corporate chills, making sure that these people are punished for screwing over their bottom line. The US has the most piracy in the world of the two biggest shows on streaming, despite both being legally available here. That's because those two shows, namely Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, and Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, are popular in the US, and therefore most of the people who download the shows are gonna be from the US. It's really not that hard to figure out. Because piracy isn't something people do for principled reasons of access, they do it because they're too cheap to pay for art. <laughs> that would imply that both of those shows are art. Now, I heard that people say that House of the Dragon isn't that bad, but The Rings of Power, I've seen clips being shared around social media. <laughs> it's really freaking bad. Not lying to you, there's a freaking Trump rally in the show. I wish I was kidding. Anyways, we have the power to stop this. I just don't think we have the will. <laughs> Wait, what? People don't have the will to pay money to big corporations that always screw them over? Well, imagine my shock. He didn't share he didn't share these tweets that are just absolutely freaking mental. I'm not saying the FBI should be allowed to drone strike people who pirate films. I'm just saying we shouldn't take all options off the table. Well, Sounds like you're inciting war to all the pirates. Challenge accepted, check mark. Think about how much funnier the FBI warnings in front of the DVDs would be if there was a little animation of a drone hunting for pirates. Is this the part where I'm supposed to be intimidated? Because I am not. Um, this is quite the headline. The Taliban bans PUBG for being too violent <laughs> wait what wait what oh the irony it's too much i don't even have a good analogy for this it's like if the casino banned players for playing video games with gacha mechanics because it's too addicting apparently pubg has been singled out for its violent content but both pubg and tiktok are charged with misleading the younger generation and wasting people's time i kind of agree <laughs> i, I kind of agree with both actually more strongly on the latter than the former i mean what do you mean it's misleading the younger generation i mean have you been raising the younger generation to believe that video games are real if so that's not really the video games fault that's kind of your fault tiktok on the other hand yeah tiktok just applies to both of those pretty much radical feminism has turned a lot of people absolutely freaking nuts they are given these ideas that men are evil and abusive and horrible to their partners sometimes they are but it's not because they're men it's because they're scumbags but my absolute most favorite and most radical idea is that men are evil even the little boys there's this tweet from this person talking about him being taken into a battered women's shelter with his mother when he was seven years old due to the abusive relationship that his mother had with his father apparently according to radical feminism because of the virtue that he's a man he's gonna be a threat to anyone that's close to him and that he would need to fend for himself on the streets or their family would have to leave the reception for this tweet is absolutely eye-opening people tell him to kill himself because of course that's just what people do on the internet and oh yeah there's this person over here oh boo hoo young men are just as dangerous as grown men so yes women <laughs> deserve wait wait wait, wait 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 let me get this straight are you telling me that you're intimidated by a seven-year-old boy <laughs> Down with a frown, on a tail, a sad clown. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fact that he said, like, weak hair. I will protect the rights of 1,000 female cadavers before I even consider the rights of an 8-year-old boy. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. 
Are you intimidated by an eight-year-old boy? <laughs> How progressive. It's mad what gender studies have turned people into. They are so scared of men that even seven to eight year old boys are a threat to them. Heck, I've even heard some women go so far as to not have boys as their kids. Some straight up aborting them before they're even born. I'm playing this. Sweetheart, this ain't gender studies. So GTA 6 got leaked a while back and there are lots and lots of food plus about that. I won't talk about it in detail here because Take 2 is probably gonna copy strike me in the same way Sony and Naughty Dog did when I got The Last of Us 2 meme. I still remember that Naughty Dog and I still won't play your crap game. Regardless, some people are asking the serious questions about GTA 6. Like this person over here. Can you have sex in this game? <laughs> Bro. They cut off the whole hot coffee thing from GTA San Andreas. What do you think is gonna happen? And personally, I don't recommend finding sex in GTA. If you're going around with hookers in GTA, I personally recommend you to do this instead. This is bullshit. I'm out of here. <laughs> I am sick and tired of not being able to have virtual sex so I can beat off to it. Bro, what games have you been playing? How about play those games instead? I want to see everything that's happening when I have sex in a game. In Night City, you can become... I want to spend every single dime to have sex in this game. Please, add this to the game. I am a man. <laughs> I am so playing this. Doesn't that make you gay? I've said this before and I say it again. If you're perfectly fine with your significant other sharing their private parts online, then sure. Go ahead and test your luck with OnlyFans girls. Otherwise, pick someone who treat their private parts less charitably. Especially not when you don't want your coworkers or your friends and family to see what you've been sending to the World Wide Web. But apparently, if you don't date people who have OnlyFans, you are a boring, insecure loser. Well, forgive me for not wanting my significant other to share her private parts online. If your boundary is just no sex workers, you can't get upset when sex work. If your boundary is just no sex workers, you can't get upset when sex workers tell you that would never date you in the first place. Your terms are acceptable, but not to all the incels and sims out there. Speaking of relationships, open relationships. I don't get it. I mean, there are some people who can find benefits of having an open relationship. There are some people who can be happy opening up their relationships. But it's just one of those lifestyles that I don't understand. And I don't want to participate. It's like drugs or alcohol or nicotine. It's even more bizarre when those people who want open relationships ask their partners who don't want open relationships and expect them to accept that suggestion with open arms. Like this Redditor over here who asked their significant other that despises cheaters to open their relationship. Imagine my shock when that significant other chose to break up with you. But that's not even the most hilarious story I heard about open relationships. This writer over here accepts his wife's request of having an open relationship where both participants can sleep with whoever they like. The problem is his wife ends up sleeping with two guys. She felt regret about it and didn't think that open marriage is for her. Well, bitch, you asked for it. And you did agree with the terms that the guy can sleep with anyone else he likes. So he slept with 30 women. <laughs> oh! Wow, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. Absolutely taken down. And then somehow, when being told all of that, the woman started crying, packed her bags, and stayed at her friends. May you rest in peace, oh man. Then this person comes into the argument saying that open relationships are not cheating. That's technically true because cheating implies deception and open relationship is not deception. It's honesty. Not the good kind of honesty, but honesty nonetheless. However, it's funny how both cheating and open relationships have very similar emotional gut punch. Maybe it has something to do with the lack of faithfulness and exclusivity with your partner, but hey, maybe I'm just old school.
Evangelion is one of those animes that managed to stand against the test of time. There are still people talking about that anime and making memes of the anime and fighting over who the best waifu of the anime to this day. For the record, it's the Shotokan on Nechan. Recently, a Neon Genesis Evangelion Blu-ray Steelbook Edition is going to be released and it shows the covers of the characters and their suits. <laughs> I didn't see Misato there, so it's a hard pass for me. Somehow, there are loads and loads of people who don't really like this thing at all because the characters in the anime are like, you know, teenagers and they're depicting the suits to have, you know, boobs and all that. Some even go so far as to make conspiracy theories about how the people who make anime absolutely hate weebs. Yeah, the people who make anime for weebs hate weebs. I wish you two had gone on strike earlier. Thanks for attracting all these paying customers. And those are just some of the hooplas that I discussed last week. If you want to see more hooplas, check on my stream channel, link down below. That's all for the recap today. Thank you so much for all of you wonderful donators and supporters. Just one dollar and you'll see your name pop up right there. Check out the links down below if you want to donate. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.